Join me as I inspect some shark eggs. Okay, you guys, check out these shark eggs. So I pulled them from our refugiums and we keep our shark eggs in a semi nursery as they're developing in reef refugiums. Uh, it has warm water that helps with the development. So the typical shark gestation period is gonna be around 100 days. However, depending on water quality and how warm or cool the water temperature is of the environment um, will depend on if the gestation period is slowed down or sped up. So what we do is we do separate our shark aids uh, depending on genetics as well as development. So we'll monitor them every single week and we'll do a shark egg inspect. And so go ahead and take a look and we're gonna hit the light so we can really get a good look. All right, Al, so go ahead, take a look down here. And what we do is we turn off the light and use a flashlight, similar as to if you were to check a chicken egg to see if it's fertilized. We do that here with our shark egg, but it's more or less to see where they are as far as development stage they are. So if you look at this guy, he still has the yolk attached. You can see his eyes developing, some of his fins, and you can see that caudal fin curling around there. He still has quite a ways to go. Then we have this guy. We do have a little bit of an air bubble here, not too big of a deal. You can easily expel that. This guy, you can see right here, look at him. He's even younger. Look how he's squiggling around, but he doesn't really have much as far as development goes. And that yolk is really large. So let's just finish expelling those air bubbles. So how the shark egg is designed is basically allows for water flow throughout the egg as it develops. So it's really important to have good quality water. Here's another one. Now you'll notice some guys along the eggs will have like sea stars attached to it. You'll even see, notice maybe some copepods pods crawling around. This is because they are kept in a biological filtration surrounding them. So some of those guys are really, really important as far as water quality goes. And it tells us that uh, we have a good ecosystem established, especially if we see a lot of copepods. Uh, you can see the cord here where it's, the shark is actually physically attached to that yolk, which is pretty cool. Oh, you got this little guy here. He's not very far along at all. Uh, if you see, look on the outside, I know if it's hard to tell for you guys, you can see those gill filaments on the outside. So those gill filaments on the outside, they haven't been developed enough to be enclosed. So you can see that. That's really cool. All right, so here's this one. Similar to the first one that we did as far as development goes, you can see those gill filaments are enclosed here. His eyes are developed. That yolk is still pretty big, still fairly large. So he still has a lot of cooking to do. Eventually, he'll, this, the yolk will gradually get smaller as he gets larger and the baby shark will literally fill up the entire egg and eventually burst out. So if y'all take a look here, this is a fully developed baby shark. You can see his gills going over here on the side. Now we do track as far as their development goes to make sure um, how they're doing. Now we do like for them for the most part to hatch out by themselves. However, if they're over the gestation period, we will sometimes go ahead and assist them. Now, why do we decide to do that? We decide to do that simply because, well, 30% of shark eggs only hatch, um, especially in the wild, and that's not a high number whatsoever. And then the babies um, are not cared for by their mom, so they have that as well. So you have a very small percentage of sharks actually reaching adulthood. Now, why only 30%? Well, that, there's a lot of factors. Um, 
a lot of it can be water quality, a lot of it can be human intervention as far as um, polluting the waters, making an unstable environment, even collecting them, things like that. But in this case, we are going to go ahead and assist him. So the process is very, very easy. And we like to do it so we can know. I'll put my thumb down right across here so that I'm protecting him. And then I just simply take scissors right across here. Sometimes these eggs can be really hard to cut open and rip open. And there you go. And what we'll do is we will then put him in our nursery, make sure he's eating or she's eating. And then um, as she develops or he develops, we'll basically move him from tank to tank.